Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Tonight we are going to be covering one of my favorite tools over the past few years. That is the installation drill driver or multi-chuck drill. I've got seven different 12 volt examples here and one 18 volt that we're going to mention briefly. We're going to talk about what I like about them, what I don't, and we're going to be putting them through some of the most extensive testing that I've ever done. So let's get right into that on Tinker with Tools. So this video is going to be quite a bit different than my typical video. There was an extensive amount of testing done over the last two to two and a half weeks with these tools, and we've been able to accumulate a lot of data through a lot of different style of testing. So we are going to go through each of the different categories of testing and talk about who the winners were in that specific category, talk about some of the things that I noticed while using the tools. I will still mention performance figures when we get to those categories, so you will still see some times for these tools, but especially with this type of tool. You're not just looking for something that has the most raw power like you might be with an impact driver or a drill. This is going to have a little more nuance to it and so for that we are switching up the testing here. Now let's go talk about the different tools we're going to be featuring today. First off you're going to have the Festool CSX. This is the OG of all of these tools. This is the one that started the category. But age has definitely passed it up a little bit in terms of power and speed and there are a lot of tools that have either copied the form factor and the ergonomics or surpassed it in power and speed. And for that reason, I think it did need an update. Festool seemed to agree because the next one we're gonna be talking about is the brand new CSX-12. Now this came out roughly about a month ago and we did get our hands on it and do our initial unboxing and testing in comparison to the old CSX. There's a lot of really good stuff here. Overall, the ergonomics are still pretty good, but there are a couple of notable changes, namely the noise and the size of the grip that we are going to be talking about today because not everything is perfect with this tool, but it's still clearly one of the top contenders in this area. All right, now one of the next ones that's been out for a while, either in a brushed or brushless form, this is going to be the brushless Bosch FlexiClick. You can definitely see is going to take the cake for the smallest one of these tools, and it is definitely nice and compact. It does have a pretty robust build quality, and overall, I think there's a lot to like here. All right, then next we do have Milwaukee. This is the first one that I ever purchased, the first one that I ever owned, and this is the one that started the love for this style of tool. This is the Milwaukee M12 Fuel Installation Drill Driver. This one essentially copied the Festool in terms of ergonomics, but it went ahead and added a little bit more power, and plus you get onto that valuable M12 platform that just offers a lot of great specialty tools on it. And so for that reason, I think there's, this one makes a lot of sense as well. This is going to be the Metabo PowerMax BS12Q. This is the brush version of their multi-check drill driver. Now this one is certainly a little bit of an older tool, and it's more in the vein of the original CSX, but I do think there's some decent stuff here. Plus, we haven't really had a chance to feature Metabo on the channel too much, so because we did have it sitting around, I did want to make sure to include it. This is going to be the DeWalt 12 volt Extreme 5-in-1 that does give you a lot of the same things, but with the different form factor. This is gonna have that more traditional drill fill. DeWalt's 12 volt lineup is certainly something they've been investing a lot in recently. So I think there's a lot of good here. So this is going to be the Hilti 12 volt multi-check drill. And this is one that I've been thinking about purchasing for quite some time. If you ever tried Hilti tools, you know that they are just some really nice, high quality tools that usually perform pretty well. So I did want to go ahead and check it out and I have not been disappointed. Now we do have a couple of notable omissions tonight. One that I've become aware recently is going to be the fine. The price isn't bad on it, but unfortunately I just didn't have the budget to pick it up in time. Now one that I have been trying to get and I've actually purchased twice, only to be shipped the wrong product, is going to be that brushless version from Metabo. I have ordered the brushless Metabo from Acme Tools. Unfortunately, it's about a three week turn time before they would deliver it. When it does arrive, we will put it through the same testing and I will update you if I feel like it would adjust any of these rankings a little bit. Now one that we do have here today, but it is not going to be in competing in the same categories necessarily, is going to be the Bosch 18 volt Flexi Click. It has the best quality attachments that you're gonna find on any of these tools today. The other thing I'll mention is this is the only one that comes with a potential for having an SDS attachment. I haven't tried that yet, but I think it's gotta to come to the channel at some point in the near future. 
Every two of these tools is going to be tested as kitted. The majority of these are going to be running on two amp hour 12 volt batteries. The one exception to that is that the Hilti kit comes with four amp hour batteries, so we are running it that way. Now I know when it comes to batteries, there are a lot of different options for some of these brands, and some of those can affect the performance here, so keep that in mind as we're testing them. Now the most compact, the smallest, the definitely the lightest, is going to be the Bosch. It really just stands on its own in terms of compactness here. The old CSX and the Milwaukee kind of also come in in that lightweight category with everything else just trailing behind a little bit. Now when it comes to traditional drill style tools, they are clearly going to be the taller and they definitely pack a little more weight because of that style. I do think that if you prefer that style tool, none of these are so big and bulky that you can't use them. Now in terms of their attachments and the weight of those attachments, I did go ahead and weigh every single attachment that these tools come with. And although there are some differences there, I didn't find that the data was all that big a difference in terms of how it impacted the tool. Some of the drills, for example, have a very solid metal chuck, and those were clearly some of the more heavy ones, but then their other attachments weren't necessarily bigger and heavier. So it really just didn't necessarily become a differentiator like I hope it would when I did the testing. And so for that reason, we're not really going to be mentioning it, but if you have any specific questions, leave them in the comments below. Now I did actually test the right angle chuck for every single one of these. If you need a right angle attachment, any of these are going to work and it's included on each one of these tools. Now the offset chuck is a different story. There are actually several here that do not come with an offset chuck, namely the Metabo, both of the Festools, do not come with that offset chuck that a lot of people love with these tools. Of the ones that are included in the tools, we did test each one of them to see how close they cut, and overall the testing was very much similar between all the tools. Metabo doesn't include it, but it's a $40 to $50 attachment. The Festool doesn't include it, and the new one is a $139 option, so having a single attachment not included is something to consider there. I'll include the torque specs on the screen so you can go ahead and see them. You can see that there definitely is a generational separation between these tools for the most part with the old CSX being very much underpowered and the rest of them hovering within about 30 to 40 inch pounds of each other. And so my assumption was that besides that old CSX, they were all gonna perform fairly similar. And although that was the case, there definitely was a clear winner in terms of performance. We did a number of different driving and drilling tests to be able to kind of measure this, and DeWalt was the clear winner here when it came to power and performance. But in terms of these times, it was sometimes twice as fast as some of the other tools. I knew it was one of the more powerful ones, I just didn't realize how much more powerful it was than some of these other tools. Now next in terms of power was going to be Hilti. It kind of makes sense the Hilti is right up there in terms of power, and it does a good job of delivering that in a really nice and smooth way. Now third place was a bit of a toss up here because you were able to see that the CSX and the Bosch were kind of trading blows back and forth. In the, some of the lower end tests, the Bosch would take the cake, but in some of the higher end ones, the CSX 12 actually went ahead and kind of clobbered it a little bit. So now a couple of things to note here on the test. The Milwaukee did not fare as good as I perhaps thought it was going to in going into this. But in reviewing some of the footage about the testing, one of the things I noticed with that tool, especially on the two amp hour battery, is it tends to kind of hang on longer and bog down more before absolutely giving up. Some of the other tools almost fail fast when they're in speed too. This is one tool where if you put it on a different battery, you are gonna see kind of different performance. I don't personally like running it on the XCs because it messes with the balance in my opinion a little bit, but it certainly would see a benefit from moving up to an HO 2.5. All right, now with these tools, we do have probably the biggest point of contention, which is going to be the noise. That's because the old CSX was an absolute silent tool nearly, and the new CSX has one of the most annoying motor noises that you will see. We placed a decibel meter at the height of the motor of the tool, and then we tested it at two inches, at 12 inches, and at 24 inches. Now the one shocker here is everyone touts how nice and quiet the old CSX is, and it did take second place, but the Metabo absolutely crushed it. The Metabo never once topped 80 decibels 
and was down in the 60 decibel range at the 24 inch distance. The CSX was also under the OSHA limit for hearing exposure at every distance and so it is a very quiet tool. The brush tools are just going to be quieter here. Now in terms of the brushless tools, the DeWalt was going to be the next quietest tool and it actually was decently quiet. A couple of its readings dropped below 85 decibels. So I do think in terms of the brushless ones, it is probably the best option. Now the CSX is going to be loud, but it is not the loudest performer here. That actually goes to Hilti followed next by Bosch. So the CSX-12 was actually the third loudest tool that was here and within a relative range of where those others are. But something that was interesting in the testing is that while it wasn't the loudest, when you stepped back to 12 and 24, you did not see as much decibel drop at those distances as what you did with some of the other tools. I did go ahead and test both the CSX and the CSX-12 in an enclosed cabinet and one thing that was noticeable is yes, the CSX-12 is louder, but both tools were actually over the OSHA hearing level. And so even though there is a pretty decent gap between the two tools, neither one of them is actually safe to be using in that enclosed space if you're right in there with it. Now, something new that I did with this testing was an attempt to measure the sensitivity of the clutch and then also the consistency of that. We did take three inch and five eighths small diameter screws and drive them into a consistent material with each one of these. We did go ahead and put the clutch into its lowest setting. The sensitivity of the clutch was something that came in as a little bit surprising. If you remember when we talked about power, the DeWalt was the clear winner. In sensitivity, it was also the most sensitive in that clutch position one, and it cut out by far the soonest of any of those. So if you're driving absolutely small fasteners, you're able to dial that one in to the point where you can really do some fine, precise work with it. Next up was going to be the CSX-12 and then the CSX. The CSX-12 consistently stopped shorter than what the old CSX did. Now, next up was the consistency. Now this one, what we did is we measured the difference, the max difference between the best and the worst run to be able to kind of see what it was going to be and how consistent the clutch was. The Festool CSX-12 came in top with 1 16th of an inch difference between three fasteners. Now the older CSX was no slouch. And then in third place, both the Bosch and the DeWalt came in at 3 16ths of an inch. When you're talking about the overall performance of those two categories combined, the CSX-12 and the DeWalt definitely felt fared very well there in terms of how precise and how sensitive the clutch was. It's just the DeWalt was a little more sensitive, the Festool was a little more precise. So now for ergonomics, that is something that is important about these tools, but unfortunately it's kind of hard to convey unless you're the ones using the tools. To try and help do this, I did go ahead and pick 11 different categories and then give a ranking for each tool in each category on a scale of one to five, with one being the best and five being the worst. Now you could have multiple ones, you could have multiple fives and anywhere in between, but it was just a way of trying to say how I felt they were relative to the other tools in the category and kind of what would stand out as the best and worst in each one of those categories. Now, first off, let's go ahead and talk about the overall winners in these categories. First up was going to be the Festool CSX-12 with an average ranking of 1.42. The Festool CSX came in second with an average category of 1.67. And overall, these tools are very much similar, but there are a couple of differences between them that distinguish them. And overall, I think they improved on enough things on the CSX-12 to give it a slight edge over its predecessor. Next up was going to be the Hilti with a finish with an average ranking of two and the Milwaukee of 2.25. So now let's go through and talk about some of the things that I like and dislike. Now Hilti is definitely one that stands out for being just a really high quality build. There's a reason why it finished in third place. Their drill check is absolutely the best drill check that is there. The Metabo isn't bad. It just doesn't really stand out on anything. I really didn't like how the battery release releases on this tool. It just wasn't very intuitive. Now the CSX is really nice ergonomic, but it's by no means perfect in my opinion. The light placement is not as good on the, as it is on the newer tool, and it doesn't stay on unless you have your finger depressed on the trigger. Now some of the more controversial stuff with the CSX-12 really comes down to the grip. Festool intends for you to use both the CSX and the CSX-12, 
with a middle finger on the trigger and your thumb kind of slotted in around the back of the tool. If you use this tool that way, you're gonna be fine. If you are someone who prefers using your index, there is absolutely no room for your pinky inside that handguard. I've actually grown accustomed to using the middle finger on the trigger for a lot of these drills because of the Milwaukee and now the Festool. And so I didn't even notice it in my first testing. But when somebody pointed out in the comments, you really sat there and look, and it is a significantly smaller handle than the old CSX. So if you are someone that doesn't like to hold it like that, then I would say this is not the drill for you. That probably will be a deal breaker for you. Now the Milwaukee has one big fatal flaw that kept it from finishing in a tie for third place, and that is the forward and reverse selector. Everything else about the tool I absolutely love, but that forward and reverse selector is absolutely awful. There's one last piece of it that I do think factors into your decision to buy one of these tools, and that is going to be price. Now, strangely enough, Festool is not the most expensive brand we have here today, with one caveat. The most expensive one you're going to be talking about today is going to be Hilti at $399 for the kit. You are getting a good tool with a great warranty. At the end of the day, it's still $400 for something that didn't really finish best in class in anything that we are doing here today. Now, when it comes to the two Festools, the older CSX doesn't really seem like something you should be buying in 2023 unless you just love the quietness of it, because at $325, it feels like a ripoff in 2023, in my opinion, because you're getting just a very old tool that no longer has a future in their lineup, and so you're not getting it at a steep discount because of that. You're still paying the price that it was before the new tool came out, and so for that reason, I just don't think it makes as much sense. The new CSX-12 at 349 is going to be the one of the more expensive options, but where it gets really expensive is if you need that offset check at $139, it's going to push that kit nearly up to $500. All right, so there we have gone over every bit of data that I have, all my impressions of the tools. So now it's time to proclaim a winner here. The DeWalt fared well both in clutch precision and in power, which seems that those two would be at odds in my opinion. Overall build quality wasn't the best, but it's definitely not terrible. And you are getting a pretty nice case for it. The ergonomics are good, just not best in class. And then you factor in the price and it comes in as the cheapest list price option of anything here. And I think overall you're just getting a lot of really great value and performance out of this tool and you're getting something that I think will satisfy a lot of people. Now coming up in second place, it was clear that the Festool CSX-12 did fare well in a lot of the different testing we do, with a couple of noticeable exceptions of noise, but it wasn't the worst in those categories, it just wasn't the best. There's a lot to like about this tool. I think there's a lot that make it a worthy improvement over the original CSX, but there's also a couple of deal breakers here for some people. The grip, for example, is going to be something that's going to upset some people. The noise has clearly upset a lot of people there. And if that is the big deal for you, then this is clearly not the tool for you. But you can't deny that it was able to perform well. It is a very premium product in how it performs, both in the sensitivity and in the consistency of it. So there is all of the testing. You really can't buy a terrible tool with any of these. There are gonna be things that people don't like about them, but overall, this is a category where everyone is bringing, in my opinion, their A game. So if you have any questions about any of the things we've talked about today, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. If you like it, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. So once again, thank you for all you do, and until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.